for another country video and like I said yesterday in my video on Atlantis going over yesterday's legend on Atlantis a bit a bit more in detail and all that we'll be going on about Malta today so yeah which has a long history and all that yeah has drawn the last so that's not for history as usual. It's during the last ice age, Malta was a high mountain joined to Italy by land. But when the ice age ended about 10,000 years ago, the sea level like rose and Malta became a group of islands. But about 5,200 BC, the Stone Age farmers arrived on Malta from Sicily and began to farm the soil. And the earliest farmers in Mal Malta made tools and all that with simple stone and wood and all. And they also made pottery, and despite the primitive tools and all that, the Maltese kind of created an advanced society. And from about 3600 BC, so I'm trying to do my nails at the same time, to about 2500 BC, they built great temples in Malta, including those that. Tarxin, Tarxin, and they also carved the Hypogeum, a series, which is like a series of underground chambers, also rock, and a temple building culture in Malta ended in about 2000 B 500 BC, and no one really knows why. But on the hand of Maltese began to use bronze tools and weapons. And it's like and it's not really clear if like a new group of people kind of relocated to Malta at this time while the Stone Age farmers learn how to use bronze and other people and uh, like other people from Mediterranean and all that. But from about 800 BC, the Phoenicians sailed to Malta, and the Phoenicians were highly civilized people from like what is now Lebanon, and they were great sailors and traders, and they began to give Malta its name, as they called it Malat, which me is short for shelter or haven. And from about 480 BC, the Phoenicians founded a city. It's called Carthage in the north. On city called Carthage, on the north coast of Africa, and from about 400 BC, the Carthaginians ruled Malta. And Malta, and they ruled for about 250 years, until about 218 BC, when the Romans conquered Malta, and Malta started to flourish under Roman rule. Really struggling struggling with my nails at the moon. As Malta was known for its honey and and for sailcloth. And meanwhile, about in six, about sixty A.D., Paul was shipwrecked on Malta while sailing to Rome. And he converted Publius, the Roman ruler, to Christianity. And gradually the rest of the Maltese followed it and by the 3rd century AD most of the Maltese were Christians. Got that. And by the 4th century the Roman Empire split into two halves like East and West and Malta was ru ruled by the Eastern Roman Empire. Which became known as the Byzantine Empire. But well, by 878 D, Malta was 
conquered by the Arabs and the Arabs ruled Malta and for more than 200 years and in the time of the Maltese I was ruled Malta for 200 years and the Maltese were heavily influenced by the Arab civilization and in particular the Maltese language was largely large shaped by the Arabic language got there with a nail so yeah and Arab rule was ended by the Normans and in 1090 a Norman named Count Roger captured Malta and by 1091 he also had also driven the arrows out of Sicily and for a time Malta became part of the Kingdom of Sicily but and the Sicilian kings took little interest in Malta and larger left the Maltese to run their own affairs and in 1266 Malta and Sicily were captured by the French but in 1283 Malta was captured by the uh, Aragonese now as they were from Aragon in, which was is part of Spain and all and in 1412 the Mal Malta changed hands again to the kings of Castile uh, which is another part of Spain and all, but, but made no difference to the ordinary Maltese. As for them, life went on as normal, and eventually Castile and Aragon reunited and, became, and Malta became part of the powerful Spanish Empire. But the Malta changed hands again in 1530, and the Spanish Green Kings granted Malta the Knights of St. John. And now it's like the Knights of Gen St. John. An interesting bunch of people in the 11th century Europeans went to journeys called pilgrimages to Jerusalem and in 1048 some Italian merchants founded an order of monks called the Order of St. John in Jer of Jerusalem and they cared for the sick pilgrims and in 1113 the order was formally recognised by the Pope but at the time Christians were fighting the crusades against the Muslim population and the Order of St. John began to fight the Muslims as well as care for the sick pilgrims and became known as Knights of St. John but in the 12, 1291 the Muslims drove Christians out of Israel and the Knights of St. John first went, into, went to Cyprus but in 1310 they moved to Rhodes however in 1523 the Turks captured Rhodes and then the Knights were left out of home until the Spanish king gave them Malta in 1530 and it wasn't really much of a fry as Malta was arid and infertile and fresh water was scarce and the people were poor but the Knights of St. John made Malta their home and in 1562 the Inquisition was established in Malta and the job of the organisation was to hunt down and punish heretics who, and heretics being anyone who didn't agree with the teachings of the Catholic Church and yeah, the Maltese Inquisition was not abolished until 1798 and the Knights of St. John continued to fight the Turks so finally, and finally in 1565 the Turks decided to try and capture Malta and they sent a fleet of 81 ships with no more than 30,000 soldiers on board and the Turkish Armada arrived on Malta. On the 18th of May 1565 when they sailed into the Bay of Masaksloks the, and the soldiers disembarked and camped on the plain of Marsa and in uh, 1565 the Grand Master of the Knights of St. John was a Frenchman called Jean Pascarot de la Verte, who lived from 1494 to 1568, and he was 70 years old, but was still going strong and valiant and all that kind of thing. And still, the Maltese could muster only a force of about 9,000, and all then fled to shelter in of a ward of cities of like Bergu, which is now. Vitaur Issa and Le Aida, 
which is now Sangla and Medina. <coughs> and they took their domestic animals with them to kind of prevent them from falling into enemy hands and all. Firstly, they decided to capture the force of St. Elmer, which stood alone in on the Skiveras Peninsula on the site of the latter. And they bombarded the forts, which resisted until the 23rd of June, 1565. And then the Turks eventually captured the fort. It was a pair of victory, as they lost 8,000 men and a quarter of their whole army in siege. And their commander, Dragut Rice, was among the dead. Afterwards, the Turks tried to capture Begu and Lister, but they failed and suffered heavy losses. And the relief force of 8,000 Sicilians arrived on northeast Malta on the 7th of September. And shortly afterwards, the Turks abandoned the siege and withdrew. And in 1565, the uh, Skiveras Peninsula, where Valletta now stands, was uninhabited except for the fort of St. Elmer. Uh, and after siege failing another Turkish attack, La Valletta decided to build a new fortification and a new city on the peninsula. And the foundation stone of Valletta was, la was laid by the 28th of March, 1566. And the streets were laid out in a grid pattern and walls were built to protect the city and a huge ditch was ditch was dug across the peninsula. And La uh, uh, Valletta himself died in fifteen sixty eight. He was seventy three, but the new city was named after him. And in sixteen thirty four Grandmaster Antoni de Paul made new fortification across the peninsula south of Valletta and they designed, were designed by an Italian named Petro Paolo Floriani and in the 18th century a, a suburb of Valletta was built between us two stone lines two lines of fortifications and it was called Florenia after him and the Turkish threat to Malta remained during like the 17th century but the, uh, by the end of the 17th century, the Turkish Empire was in decline. And while the Knights continued to care for the sick, and in 1574, they began to build a hospital and the Sacra Infirmaria in Valletta. In 1676, the Grand Master Cotana founded a school of anatomy and surgery. And in 1693, Malta was devastated by an earthquake, but was able to recover. And during the 18th century, the ninth of St. John became corrupt and they spent their time drooling, drinking and chasing women. And when the knights became decadent, they lost favour with the Maltese people, and the night rule of the knights was finally ended by Napoleon. A good, a good man called Napoleon Bonaparte. And while sailing to Egypt, French ships anchored off Malta and Napoleon asked for fresh water for his ships, but the knights refused. And on the 11th of June 1798, the French outlanded and the knights quickly surrendered and they'd lost their fighting spirit and Napoleon left Malta six days later, but left 4,000 men to guard the island. And the French removed treasures, treasures from the churches and abolished the Inquisition. Uh, but on the 2nd of September 1798, the Maltese rose in rebellion against the French at Medina. And in French, and the French Review withdrew to Valletta, and the Maltese appealed for the British to help. And they imposed a naval blockade of the island, and the French held out in Valletta for two years, but did not when finally surrendered on the 5th of September 1800 and in 1802 the British and French made a temporary peace by the Treaty of Amiens and they agreed that the Knights of St. John should return to Malta however the Maltese did not want the Knights to return and they asked the British to stay in case of war between Britain and France 
again in H&A Freeman for a nice good return. And as a result, the British stayed, and in 1814, all the European powers recognised Malta as a British colony, a colony by the Treaty of Paris. And by the early 19th century, it was quite an, it was, it was pretty quite an uneventful for Malta. However, the Crimean War from 50, 1853 to 1856 brought prosperity to Malta. As always, a route between Britain and, and the soldiers serving in Crimea, and the, and the opening of Suez Canal in 1869 also brought prosperity as it meant that the ships sailed through the Mediterranean, Mediterranean stopped at Malta. And in 1883, a railway between Valletta and Medina. I mean, the British allowed the Maltese limited role, role in government, and from 1835, a council of government made up the permanent Maltese was formed to advise the British governor. And from 1849, the Maltese were allowed to elect some representatives. And from 1887, the majority of representatives were elected. But the nest. Maltese were dissatisfied, and on the 7th of June 1919, they rioted, and the British soldiers shot and killed like four Maltese. But in 1921, British gave Malta a new constitution, and Joseph Howard became first Prime Minister. Yet, political unrest in Malta continued, and as a result, a new, constitu a new constitution was revoked in 1930. It was reinstated again in 1930, but provoked a year later in 1933. Then during the early 20th century, many dissatisfied Maltese emigrated to Britain, to into English-speaking countries like the USA, Canada, and Australia. And the migration continued after World War Two. And but on the 10th of June 1940, the Italy declared war on Britain, and the next day, on the 11th of June, the Italians bombed Malta. That first Malta was defended by only three Gloucester Gladiator biplanes called Faith, Hope and Charity. And soon the British how the British soon sent hurricanes to Malta. No hurricanes being like a type of plane, not the very windy phenomena that happens generally happens first happen around Bahamas, Caribbean and U.S. of A. But the Italian still continued to bomb Malta, and the raids grew worse when the aircraft from Germany, the German Luftwaffe, were sent to Malta. Though more rations in Malta grew very short, and on the fifteenth of April, nineteen forty-two, King George the sick for what the entire population of Malta, the George Crash. And a relief convoy reached Malta on the 15th of August, 40, 1942. And the situation improved after November 1942, when the British won the Battle of El Alamein in Egypt, and the Germans and Italians in North Africa surrendered in May 1942. And by in July 1943, May, May 1943 and July 1943, the Allies invaded Sicily. And in 1947, after the war, the British granted Malta another constitution, together with £30 million to help repair the war damages. And, but the Maltese pressed for independence, which again on the 21st of September 1964. And at first the Queen was he head of state, but in 1972 the Malta became a republic. And In the meantime, Dominic Dom Mintoff of the Labour Party became Prime Minister in 1971 and he weakened ties with Britain and he was saying the last British serviceman left Malta in 1979 and in 1982 Agatha Barbara became the first woman president of Malta, like female president of 
while turning in 1987, the Nationalist Party took power and Edi Benesh Adami became Prime Minister. And in 19... And Jamalta, moving on into the 21st century, Jamalta joined the EU in 2004 and joined the Euro in 2008. And state of main industry in Malta is tourism, although there is also an electronics and pharmaceuticals industry. And although, like the rest of the world, they suffered during the recession of 2008-2009, but Malta soon recovered and today Malta is flourishing and its economy is growing stronger and the population stands about 4,115,000. So yeah, that is a history moving on to the language. Now the official languages of Malta are Maltese and English. And Maltese is a semi uh, language of Semitic origins, written in the Latin scripts and, the natural lang and is the national language of Malta in the early centuries. It's incorporated words that have derived from English, Italian and French, although Italian is also widely spoken. And Mal Malti, the Maltese, Maltese language is a source of fascination to like visitors and linguists, as Maltese is the language language uniquely spoken, lang unique language and Malti is the only Semitic language written in Latin characters. For the ages like many foreign words, particularly English and Italian, have become parts of the language and English is also like an official language as it, and is widely influenced. And is widely influenced but currently spoken as a language of international business and all that. No, it's like I'm not surprising that the that the island, island has managed to retain a unique language in face of so many others brought by various powers in the centuries, and Maltese was largely only the only spoken language until the latter half of the nineteenth century, when its grammatical rules were defined and written down. And the earliest written evidence of Maltese is by Ballard by a Ballard by Petro. Cassara, who died in 1485, and a nice attempt to script it as well as the survival of the language is perhaps a testament to the resilience of like the Maltese to remain a distinct people and culture. And then Mat Malti is thought to derive from a language in other ancient Phoenicians who arrived in Malta around 750 BC. The influence of Ar Arabs who made the island their home from the 9th to the 13th century made it was clear in the Maltese language whose roots is closely akin to Arabic and the place names and numbers are most obvious examples of Arabic influence on language. And for a non-native speaker to learn Malti is spoken most awkward sound is similar to like Arabic Q and Almost, almost sign is almost silent, uh, but difficult to mas master. And all this. But there is out there that should help somewhere. Moving on to legends and all that. As there's like a couple and all that, and the first of which I'm going to talk on is the Isle of Calypso. And one of the way to tales of Greek mythology is Homer's Odyssey, and the story follows a long journey of a hero Odysseus, and includes his troubles with a nymph Calypso on her island of Argeia, as Calypso lived in a cave on the island and fell in love with a hero, bewitching him, says to keep him on the island eternally. And for seven years, Odysseus stayed with Calypso, Calypso under her enchantment. And it wasn't until the intervention of the gods that Odysseus was released from her spell and allowed to return home to his wife, Ithaca, which makes the tale relevant to Malta. It is that it is widely believed that the island of Argeia 
and then Maltese island of Gozo are one of, on the same thing. And since 4th century BC, it was it has been suggested that Gozo is indeed the Isle of Calypso, further being so reinforcing the pres idea of the presence of the came by Ramla Bay on the island's north northern side. And it's believed that this cave is where Calypso is said to have lived and it is known as Calypso's Cave and the cave is as a fact a series of caverns and according to the legend leads right down to the sea and the cave had just recently had a small collapse and is not currently visible from its regular viewing platform it's like we should go there it's like you can kind of some people say that it's easy to see why some that how a legend arose and about the island having a magical hold on you. As Gozo is said to have his foot be full of enchanting places and the vibrant red sand of Ramla Beach on the by Eclipse's cave can be an example of it. Then there's a megalithic Giantess, as in scattered throughout the islands of Malta, are the stone structures that date all the way back to the 3600 to 2500 BC. And these 500,000 year old structures are high, historically known as megalithic uh, due to the large stones used to construct them. And thanks to age, these millennial temples are recognised as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and interwoven into the local folklore of Malta. As according to the local legends, the ruins were remains of a temple built by a giant by giants who once resided there in such a place with several ruins is an area known as Gantija or the Giant's Tower in England. And in the heart of Gozo as a large temple still stands to the day to this day. And are the earliest of all the megalithic temples in Malta. And the one legends from Gigantia is a giantess who was seen carrying boulders overhead in order to build many other stone structures found throughout the area. And it was said that she only ate broad beans and honey and built the place places of worship while carrying a child too. And then there's the shipwreck of St. Paul, who I mentioned, I've mentioned one a couple of times above. A country of Malta is deep has a deep relationship with Christianity, which according to legend is quite a fant quite a fantastic start. And it said that Christianity came to Malta with a shipwreck of the Apostle Paul, a small island just across off the coast in 60 AD, and told in the Acts of of the apostles, Paul was en route to Rome as a political prisoner when a ship he was on got caught in a storm and its passengers were shipwrecked and washed ashore and on the island, now known as St. Paul's Island. The island lies just across the bay from the town of Bugaba in the north eastern northern coast of Malta and the tale says that one on Malta, the passengers were met and welcomed by the locals under Roman rule, and they invited to a fire. Paul was suddenly bitten by a poison snake, snake but miraculously didn't fall ill. Now people saw this as a sign that Paul was indeed an exceptional man, and Paul would end up staying in Malta for the entire winter, winter and began the spread of Christianity on the island where he healed the Roman chief's father from a fever, and it is said that the chief named Publius would become renowned first bishop and also become one of the first Roman colonies to convert. So it was an auspicious start for Christianity and all that. And yeah. That is the video today and I'll see you all later on. Bye bye for now.